down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Hey, hey, you tuned in to the Savvy Radio Show. This is your friend, Steve Van Kalenberg. Bam, I'm so excited you tuned in. And I'm really excited that somebody reached out to my wife. So it was a lady, uh, a woman friend of of somebody that reached out to my wife that my wife chatted with and said that she listens to the podcast. And I was like, for real? And she said she listened to the podcast and that she was dealing with some depression and some frustration. She was at the low and that she listened to the Savvy Podcast and she got out of the Mick and Meyer. I was like, oh, snap. That really inspired me. And I, I hope that... um that you're inspired too. I don't know where you're at in your life. Uh, man, I'm telling you, sometimes I don't even know what I should be doing. I always question myself on the podcast, but when I hear things like that, like she was, she identified with the, the fight that I deal with on a regular basis of highs and lows, and you can call them depression, you can call them whatever you want to call them, but it's just exciting that she listens to the podcast and she's not even in real estate and I don't even know how she got in the podcast. She probably saw it on my Facebook page. And, you know, she's a friend. And it's just cool. And so, you know, I, I just encourage you to inspire other people. And if you don't feel like you can inspire somebody, then just forward my podcast to them. And the one that I guess she just came out this week about depression and, you know, just real life struggles I go through. Man, and I'm telling you right now, I got a ton of them. I had a house burned down. Anyway, I, I, I'm going to get all into those, but this one is on my list um, that I wanted to share. Uh, I, got, I love it when people send me questions, and I got a lot of questions coming up, but here's one. It says, question, my son and I were talking, and what is the minimum amount to start investing in real estate slash passive income? All right, now, listen, I don't. The probably the person that listen to this and uh, you know I'm about to crush you real fast so just be patient with me you should never think about the minimum all right your mother blank and goal should be passive income or real estate investments that yield income and you can call it passive because it's really not that passive because you're checking on tenants you're checking on the property manager whatever the case may be but listen you if you have that mindset right out the gate what's the minimum it's not going to work. You, you got to be like, I'm going to do it no matter what. I'm 100. I'm, I'm tired of working this nine to five. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of my wife struggling. To, she, she's got another three jobs. Whatever. That's You can't say the word minimum. You got to ask me or ask somebody, what does it take? It takes grit, hard work, ethic, education, you don't know what you're doing. That's normal. I didn't know what I was doing. It's normal. And the way to get passive income is just taking a step of faith, believing in yourself that you can do it and you can try and try and you will fail and fail. And then one day you'll get an asset and that hopefully it's a rental property or then you roll that money into another asset and you roll it over to an asset. And then you like think like I do right now, right? Right now, I'm like, I got to get multiple streams of income. I know I talked about that enough, and I'm on it right now. Multiple streams of income. And I'm thinking about dog treats. I know that's crazy, but that's the reality. It's because it's a long story. I'm, I'll talk about it some of the time, but, you know, I got a dog. I'm not a big dog lover. My wife is always begging me for this dog. We got this dog. And then what comes with a dog, comes with cost and neuter. I mean, all this jazz. But like this dog treat thing really got me amped up the other day that, you know, she's going to buy treats for this dude. And I'm like, how much are we spending on treats? You know, I'm like, you know, 50 cents, a dollar. Dude, people spend 10, 20, 30, 50 dollars at the store. And I'm like, oh, one of my dreams is to have a consumable product, something that, you know, an energy drink or something, a restaurant, a consumable product, toilet paper, whatever the case may be that yields residual income, AKA passive. So here's the point. If I think this way, what's my minimum investment to make dog treats? It's about how much money I'm gonna make, how fast I'm gonna make it, and when I'm gonna get my initial investment back. 
regardless of what it costs, okay? Because if it costs $1 million to make dog treats and I go borrow a million dollars and it I can pay back that million dollars in three years, guess what? Any bank on the planet will loan me money. And see, if you think in minimum, you're thinking of a low number and you won't move forward. It's just too big. You got to think bigger than that. I'm going to buy a real estate investment. I'm going to buy a rental property. I don't care if you're in Texas. I don't care if you're in California. Is it possible? Absolutely. I bought a house in Florida, million dollar property. I made it happen. Was it murder? It was murder. I learned and cut my teeth and I failed miserably and I sold it. I went and looked at that property the other day and now it's worth 1.8 million. I bought it for seven. I put 50 in it. I flipped it for 950, 975, somewhere around there. And I was just so dumb on that property because I had a low self-esteem mentality and they, now it's worth 1.8. And the, remember that day when I closed on that property, I was renting it out, Airbnb, at two twenty five a month, thought I was special, thought I knew what I was doing. And then my mentor just smashed me real hard one day, and I, I'll get into that some other day. And then when I closed this property, and I'm so glad Hurricane Harvey came through, skipped over my crib, and I was like, I'm out. I can't handle this stress. It's in Florida. And I sold that mess. The next day, they put that property on Airbnb and VRBO, and they're charging five twenty-five a month. And you see, that's just because I was looking at the minimum. The minimum. You cannot look at the minimum. See, I was just looking at the minimum. How much is it going to cover? Because when my mentor asked me, he's like, how much money do you make down there? I go, I break even. What? And he go, how much equity do you have in there? I'm like, blank. What? And you're not making any money, sell the asset. So I trusted my mentor and I sold the asset. But if I was charging 525, it would have been a success because I was thinking of the minimum. Stop doing it. Think about how can I make more money, what assets I can buy. And regardless, if you don't have money, you can borrow money. You can partner with somebody. In my world, if you have an idea... If you have work ethic or grit and you want to work, I'll loan you the money. That's just how it is right now because I'm only one person and I have the ability to scale and have opportunities that I cannot, can't even scratch the surface on. I need help and I'm down to partner. So let's just start over. I went on this tangent and my bad, but here we go. Question. My son and I were talking, what is the minimum amount needed to invest in real estate passive income? All right, Man, first of all, I just appreciate you reaching out. And I know, you know, when people reach me out, they may be scared that, you know, I'm going to beat you up. I'm not going to beat you up all the time. You know, you just need to ask questions regardless what you think they are. You you need answers. And I hope that this dude gets this answer and he grows from it. And so my response, and I actually wrote this podcast out. It's actually something sophisticated I finally done. I usually go off, off the chain. But I said it depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to do. And I just gave them the basic answer. I go, some banks require 20% depending on the situation, but usually down. You can also borrow the money privately from someone else. I have done that multiple times, and I've talked about it way too much on the podcast. But you want to borrow commercial money, and it's different than FHA money or a conventional loan or a broker. Okay, And so all this scenario, it's like, like that's not the question. The question is, I want to buy a rental property. What's the first thing I need to do, Van Kallenberg? Boom. Okay. Well, right now, the first thing this cat needs to do, the person that sent me this, he needs to work on his mindset. That is possible. You got to have self-belief. I could do this. You can. I, I'm most, when I started this thing in 1999, I was like, I had belief. I was tired of being poor. I could do this. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I could do this. I could believe in myself. I could do this. You got to run into the to the mirror and say, I can do this. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a hustler. I'm a savvy business person. I only bleed residual income. I mean, seriously, I still teach classes and I still do coaching. And, you know, every time I partake in that, I'm like, man, this is not residual income, but I love it so much. But the reality is it's not residual. So I got to slow that down and I got to put my energy and effort into residual products, services, investments, whatever. All right. And then there's also this thing called no money down. The the best thing to do is to get educated. You know, what books have you read? You you know, just firing off a question to the savvy somebody that, you know, that's a good start. 
but I would probably get on my knee and knees and get the education in me. And so you got to make a decision. That's the first thing. The second thing is you got to own or you got you got you are your own educator. You can rely on me. And man, I'm glad that the podcast motivates people. And I'm I always say when people get in real estate, I mean, let's go listen to all 600 episodes and you're good to go. Like everything you ever want to learn is already out there. Everything you need to know is already out there. But are you willing to put the time in? Are you really want to be a real estate investor? Do you really want to be wealthy? Are you tired? You know, have you really thought about in 10 years, what's going to look like in 20 years? What's going to look like? You really think the government's going to take care of you? Come on. Look, look what's going on right now. I mean, I had to pause on that one for a minute. What's it, what does it look like? I, I just said I knew that it wasn't going to work out. So I'm going to have to be financially independent myself, a.k.a. financially free. Do you have that? So the first thing, number one, you got to educate yourself. You got to must change your mindset. And the two books that I recommend are Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a philosophy. And then you got to get into Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. Because, you know, I don't know who what age you are because he said, my son, how old is your son? You know, can his son read both these books? Absolutely. You you could read these books. But one book is a philosophy, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And the other book is like really how to do it. Like this dude became a millionaire by making a website called limo.com. I mean, and he, t- he walks you through the whole process. So, and another book that I would just, just randomly came to my mind, I, I would definitely recommend is The 4-Hour Work Week. These are not how-tos. These are just principles so you can get the ball rolling. Number two, you got to have a belief as possible and show with a proof of concept. And so one of my second books I read back in the day, I mean, it's crazy. I'm going on 23 years of real estate, was Creating Wealth by Robert G. Allen. Now, this is an old school book, but he basically broke it down. And, you know, everybody's dream is to be a millionaire, whatever. Man, when you hit a millionaire, it's, not, it, it, it's just starting out. But when you get there, it's pretty cool. You know, hey, I'm a millionaire, whatever. It means nothing. But this book really tells you exactly how to do it, Creating Wealth by Robert G. Allen, and you... In 10 years, you can have a net positive of $1 million in cash by following this exact philosophy, process, how-to book. If you're that kind of personality, what do I need to do? It says real clearly, buy a $150,000 house, three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage, brick, and just follow this plan. Buy one house, try to pay it off, buy another house, or you know whatever. I just scaled that mess. I just put it on the throttle. When someone said you could do it and it's this dude is possible, I just I just amp that mess up. And I think that's what you need to be doing. Just amp that mess up. But you got to start. You got to make a decision. You got to change your belief. And then here's another book I hardly ever talk about. But if you are ready for the next level, this is a phenomenal book. It's I, I put this on here called It's the Process. And it's called The Millionaire Investor by Gary Keller. And you got to take action. I mean, this dude just outlays it real simple. It's it's an easy audio book. I'm telling you, it's one of my f- by far top 10 real estate books on the planet. And I've read too many to count. Get that book in you ASAP Ricky. So philosophy, right? Mindset, right? Possibility, belief. That was the Robert G. Allen. And then now you have the process, which is the millionaire fa- millionaire investor by gary keller it's a blue book then after that number four sign up for a multi-day conference to meet real investors doing real deals and matter of fact i am speaking 2020 2022 june 2nd in spring i mean in st louis i'm going to be at the mr landlord conference go there and meet people there's real investors and some of these folks will mentor you and some of them will mentor you for free. And almost probably all of my closest friends on the planet I've met at Mr. Landlord Conference. Another one, you can't have no, this is in St. Louis, it's in dead center. It's a $300 plane ticket. The hotel room is $115 a day. Find a roommate and make it happen. From Oklahoma City, if you live in Oklahoma City, it's a six hour drive. I send it to some of my friends and they just don't respond to me. And I'm like, I'm telling you, this is where I raise private money. This is where I build relationships. This is where I get deals. This is how I just build an empire 
So that's number four. Sign up for a multi-day conference. And if you're in Ohio, in the 1st of November, so you got right now, you got June, six months later, you go to Ohio, just follow this little plan. This is exactly what I do. June, I go to Mr. Landlord. November, I go to Ohio. And it's Ohio RIA Conference. Vena Cox, she puts it on. It's a non um Nonprofit. There's a thousand investors there. Yes, it's a sh- sales show. They'll there'll be some speaker up there selling something. And that's okay, and, but the content's legit. <coughs> but you have an opportunity to meet somebody, and there'll be somebody at your level there that you can buddy up. They have on Thursday, the day before, they have this advanced deal session off the chain. It's a closed door. You have to do at least fifty deals, and maybe that's you. Maybe you need to push in the pants. Whatever it needs to be, it's a simple process. Put the work in, build relationships, and get the ball rolling. All right, so number five, here's another one. Observe, shadow somebody locally. Find someone at your local real estate club meeting and ask them to ride with them. Back in 1999, that's exactly what I did. This is no joke, down to the wire, legit. Back then, they had newspapers. I looked in the newspaper, owner finance deal, I called that owner finance deal. It was $5,000 down. The dude said, come look at it. I drove over there. I tried to buy it. Can't remember if I bought that one, but I bought two at that time. No money down. I mean, $5,000 down. Actually, I negotiated down $2,000. Here's the point. One of the second dude that I ever met on an owner finance became my mentor. And 26 years later, 23 years later, he is still my mentor today. And I would just ride in his little Ranger, my knees to my chin, Choking out, Chubba Lucius, driving around, asking the dude a thousand and one questions. And that's how I got to this level. Whoop, whoop. It's that simple. I read a bunch of books. I put it to action. I made a decision and I just crushed it. And to this day, I just, I'm so thankful for the millionaire, uh, that mentor that, that educated me. And I thank him that I became a milita- millionaire because of you. And he blows me off. He never asks me for anything. I've never paid this dude. He's asked me to do like one thing. Can you analyze this for me, these deal? You know, and I was like, sure. But I'm telling you, the guy's saved me thousands of dollars and has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars because I'll be in the middle of a deal like that beach house. And it was listed for 800. I was was so happy to buy it for 750. He's like, dude, offer 700. And I got it. That dude made me 50 G's just like that. Just because I called a friend and said, man, I'm thinking about buying this. I'm out of my zone. What would you offer? And it reminds me of the Napoleon Hill book where they were giving out sales leads to, and it was, it was more of a psychological thing. The sales team would come in, I need more leads, I need more leads. So he'd go in the back room, write down 10 names and come out and hand it to them. And they would make a sale and they would come back again. You go in the back room, write out these 10 leads and come back and they would do it again. And they would just make, and they were on fire and, just made leads. and Napoleon Hill finally told him, say, listen. He comes back the third time with the phone book and slaps it on the table. I'm just writing these names out of the phone book. These are all cold call. So they would be calling people. Hi, Napoleon Hill told me to call you. And they were all cold calls. And see, it's psychological. It's like when I heard that story at Napoleon Hill, I was like, I have no fear in getting rejection. I had no fear when people uh, say no or they don't negotiate. And even today was a hard day for me. In my other in my other little endeavor, where you got to fire people, or you got to fire a client, and you got to be straight up with them and say no, and the dude begged me no, 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 da, da, da. and you just say thank you, and sometimes you got to fire bad clients, sometimes you got to say no, and sometimes you got to negotiate, and when it hurts, when you got to offer lower, you know I always love that old adage, if you didn't offer it till it hurts, you didn't offer an, you didn't offer low enough. Oh. I love my homeboy. He drives around all day long, super millionaire, and he just lowballs people all day until it hurts, and it hurts him. But now, 20 years later, dude's super large, and, and the reason why is because he kept he got over that fear of rejection. Can you do that? It takes practice. I talk about that on a lot of my podcasts. Go to the flea market. I taught my kids how to get rejection. Walk up to people. Would you take a dollar for it? So, again, number five, shadow somebody. Number six, Hire a coach for accountability. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm about to do a podcast on accountability here. I'm telling you, it's life change. And direction. So when you hire somebody, they have, they have vested interest. 
they're going to give you accountability. They're going to give you direction, which is the key. You need direct. What do I do now, Van Kallenberg? Where do I go from here? Did you do this? Did you call that person? That's what you need in your life. You don't need a Van Kallenberg coach. You need a coach. And that you can meet that coach at the RIA that could be free. I met my homeboy Ed there. He helped me with my very first apartment 10, 12 years ago. And for the first couple of years, we would call each other every Sunday and just be accountable. I'm telling you, it worked. When I had to call Ed and say, yeah, man, I, I tried to do it and I didn't. And he just busted me. You need accountability. You need a coach. All right, number seven, look at deals daily. Run the numbers daily. Think like this. It's like a school and you got to pass a grade. And your first objective is 100 deals. You got to run 100 scenarios. You should physically look as many deals as possible. And I know time is an issue. Transportation may be an issue for you. Getting inside doors may be an issue. But I would set little goals like I'm going to look at three houses this week, five houses this week one a day physically, but the rule of thumb throughout this lifetime is 100 deals. If you can get 100 deals under your belt of understanding, it's going to make your life so much easier. And, and again, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again because I think it's so powerful. One time I was hanging out with a dude that had 500 units. He was about 5, 10 years ahead of me, maybe three years. I'm not sure. He's like, Stephen, the difference between you and a rookie is that we've just been in a lot more doors. We've just been through a lot more houses, and we've seen a lot more. And I know that all the time. And I see, I mean, I believe that because when I go see, when I just take someone and do a house tour or go through a property, they miss so much stuff. And to me, it just, I just, I just see so much stuff. And that's just wisdom, experience, is because I looked at up a thousand deals. You got to do the same thing. You got to look at a thousand deals, a hundred deals minimum straight. If you want to be superstar, get up in it. I did a podcast a while back of what uh, what I look at for when I look at photos. I definitely would look at that too and practice on photos. Number eight, 30 minutes a day engagement. Woo, this is me. This all this is me. I mean, I wrote all this straight up. I, mean, I forgot. I wrote this a couple weeks ago, but... 30 minutes a day in engagement. Dang, that just sounds hot. Eight, number eight, 30. I got to say it one more time. 30 minutes. Are you engaging on forums, bigger pockets, the millionaire forum? Oh my goodness. Or even Mr. Landlord has a forum. More on the landlording side. I'm telling you, when I get on the millionaire fast lane forum and I just start reading, I get blown away. And I know people are on there every day, and I wish I could get on there every day. Because I can't, because I got all these other commitments. But I'm telling you, 30 minutes engagement a day will just boost you to the next level. Like, I'm telling you, I'm writing this right now, this whole podcast, not only because for my homie that I love, but I'm writing this podcast for my son. And number eight, OG Max, you need to spend 30 minutes. I know you introverted. I know you tech wizard. I know you hide behind YouTube and uh, emails and Facebook. Listen, you got to get your name out there. You got to get engagement rolling. And I'm telling you, it's going to it's gonna be big. And pick one of those mediums. If you're an entrepreneur and you're about residual income, multiple streams of income, millionaire fast lane. You're, you really want to get into real estate. You really want to do it well. Boom. Do bigger pockets. And I just found out from a, a guy that I've connected with for a while, Ben Scott, super dude. He does a virtual meetup through Bigger Pockets every other week. I'm like, man, that's a commitment. He's like, I want to bring value and I want to rise the tide. I was like, ah, that's it. That's the 30 minutes engagement. I was like, homie, you need to be on the podcast. He said, okay. So take a look out for Ben Scott. He's coming through from Bigger Pockets, OKC. Uh, realtor, investor, realtor, sharp, sharp dude coming out. Number nine, know the numbers, master the numbers. Okay, here's a basic rule. I love talking to some old school real, um, investors, and they run the same thing. I run all my numbers on every investment at 6% loan leveraged on a 15-year AM. It's simple. So if you're going to go buy a $100,000 house and I borrowed 6% for the money, 
and I'm going to am it for 15 years. What is that payment minus taxes and insurance? And that's your cash flow. Keep it that simple. I know there's 100 spreadsheets out there. They're all sexy. They cool. I hear you. Somebody made it. You probably made your own spreadsheet, wasted so much time making your own spreadsheet, and you ain't got no deal. All right, that's your problem. I hope you got convicted right there. I've seen a lot of people talk some a lot of stuff, but they don't got no deal. You know, people interviewing other other realtors or, or accountants and like, you got no deal. Like, yes, you need to have an accountant. Yes, you need to have a great rock star realtor. Yes, you need to have a mentor. But listen, don't be wasting all that time on that. Go find a deal. That should be your number one thing. How do I analyze a deal? How do I make it happen? Master the numbers. Make it simple. Things will change over time, but it's a simple, and I can break down this simple equation later. Why? But for now, you need to understand it. Get the mass, the mindset in place. Get the intensity going. Get your cash flow going. And then, of course, this is not the perfect rule because when you work on commercial and, and you work in loaning money, it's just they're all different ratios. All right. Number 10, set goals and milestones with milestones. Set goals. So, like, I just threw out a goal for you just two minutes ago. That little goal was this. I'm going to get into three houses every week. That's so simple if you got to do all three on Saturday. If you can't find a realtor that can get you into an investment property, then you got the wrong realtor. But you got to get in three houses every week minimum. If you were a baller, I would say 10. Three is minimum. Five, you're above average. And I'm talking about driving around for dollars, looking for FISBO signs. That's for sale by owner. Call the number and go look at it. Even if the chick's like, yo, it's, you know, you know the house is worth 60 or 80 and she's trying to sell for 150, go through the process and then negotiate in the low baller. Ask her, ma'am, through my research and what I've done as a real estate investor, I have to make money. I know you need to make money. I want you to make money, but this is what I can offer, $80,000. i am telling you, I've gotten so many deals just being upfront and honest with them. They'll, they'll get mad. They'll be rejected. You almost feel like you got to run off. That's okay. Two weeks later, they call and you buy. It's that simple. And number 11, we're near the end. Celebrate. But you got to put the work in. I'm telling you, get with, just text me. Just, I'm telling you, I'll teach you how to celebrate. I celebrate on my mountain bike. No joke. I just, the other day I bought a $20 thing so I can control my phone when I'm riding around the bike and I got my music blazing. That's a, that's, that's a victory for me. Or this week, I'm like, man, this is two weeks in a row that I've worked out every day. Man, I'm going to celebrate. Not with food. I'm just going to celebrate somehow. I'm going to write myself a letter. Whatever it's going to take. Or I'm going to tell my wife. I don't know. Find a friend that you can celebrate with. It might even be one cocktail. Hey, I'm about margaritas every once in a while, okay? But don't don't get too many calories in you. Just, just celebrate somehow. You know, I try to set goals. If I can do 50 sit-ups for two weeks straight every day, I'm going to go buy a book. All right? Figure it out. Here's my last and final thought. There is no standard path for real estate investors. What I just told you is my way. And if it was my son, this is how I'm going to pass it down. This is how the rich get rich and they pass down the legacy. This is how I did it. This is how you could do it. Follow these 11 steps, and it may be glorified amazing for you. Or it may be a train wreck and you're scared. I don't know. But there is no standard path. You can come, okay, you can come from the highly educated background or a minimal educational background. And that's the one thing I need to tell you. I learned this this other day. It, it boils down to experience, right? You can be the most educated dude with 10 degrees and you're a doctor, but you have no experience. You can't get it done. So there's no standard path. You can come from a highly educated background or a minimal educated background. It takes effort, energy, a plan, and action every day. How bad do you want freedom? I'm telling you, 23 years later, broke, homeless, actually 25, homeless, broke. I didn't even, I'm telling you, there's so many horrible stories about water heaters and I couldn't even pay for them. I'm telling you, the life that I live now, I do not believe it. I, I, I pinch myself. I'm honored. I'm even honored that you listen to this podcast, even honored that you listen to it this far. And I'm telling you, it's all because of real estate. It's all because I put the work in. Yes, have I been sued. Yes, have I been denied a loan. Yes, have I had a house burned just recently. Yes, have I bought the wrong asset. But 
Did I make it? I don't know, but I'm having a good time, and I have enough cash flow. So go do it. Go buy assets. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 